This morning, I want to um, talk about a little bit about this topic, God's silver lining. Okay, it's a, not a familiar uh, topic because this passage is all about uh, unfamiliarity. Okay, so uh, in the worldly way of understanding this uh, metaphorical uh, usage of this, you know, this, this phrase, silver lining, they call it as like every cloud has a silver lining. That means through all the unpleasant moments in our life, through difficulties and circumstances, there is always a benefit that we will not be able to see. So the worldly philosophy is all about look for an advantage. But then for godly children, God's silver lining is about, yes, we do go through life ups and downs, and there are unfamiliar paths that we have to navigate through. And uh, we come across uh, several situations. But the difference is, it is just not uh, about an advantage or a benefit, but then it is about in the midst of that path, that unfamiliar path, God still works out his plan meticulously. And God fulfills his purposes. So for us, it is all about God fulfilling his plans and purposes while we are put in this path that is so unfamiliar. So one of the things uh, that we can start to understand in our life is this. The more and the more we become familiar with God, we will come to this realization that we are still unfamiliar with his ways. I don't know how many of you agree. Okay, so for example, if uh, no, I, I know this person and I talk with him, the more familiar I become, I know this is what he will like, this is what he will decide, and this will be the perspective of his life. So the more closely I work with the person, I know all about his which color he likes, which is a favorite place, what he likes to do. So I become what? Because as humans, we are only limited. Okay? So I kind of get to know about him. And the more in, in human relationships, it is something you know, so sad because the more we get to know about this person, the more we kind of say, Appa, please leave me. That is why in a husband-wife relationship, what? There's so much of struggle. Because uh, all of your flaws is exposed. The more, when you look at that person from a distance, it is all good. But the more closer you try to come, you approach, and you see all the flaws, okay? So in human relationship, it is what? And you kind of come to a place, the person whom you respected, suddenly what? You don't want to respect. Because you see that there's so much of flaw in that person. That is human relationship because we exactly know what he is up to. But with God, it is not the case. What? Though we become familiar with God, one of the things that we realize is we will always be unfamiliar with his ways. That is why he is God. How do we say that, Pastor? What do we read from Isaiah, the prophet, is... His ways are not always. His thoughts are not. So he always has something different. So even though we try to understand, we are still what? Limited with our understanding. And this morning it will be an encouragement even as we are going to look into the passage from Acts. Unfamiliar path that God helps us to navigate brings unrecognized benefits that are Totally unusual and unexpected. Unfamiliar path, but then it unfolds a lot of unrecognized blessings that are totally unusual and unexpected. So, um, when we think about our lives, we, from morning till night, we want to really make sure that uh, the work that we do, we are able to do uh, 
in an excellent way, that our lives are protected, that we are well fed, that our children are taken care. So there's a routine that happens. All that we want is what? A very smooth sail. We don't want any interruptions in between. So from morning till night, everything should go as we planned. And we are quite okay with that kind of a lifestyle. From morning, if we have breakfast, go about our work and afternoon uh, lunch, then we come back home in the evening, we spend some time with children. Uh, every day routine, we are, we are quite okay with that. But for you and I to understand God a little bit more, God has to always place us in some unfamiliar path. But do not get frightened. The, the response from people quite often is when they have to navigate this unfamiliar path, there's so much of fear. They, why? Because they don't know what is going to happen. This is, a, this is an unfamiliar place, unfamiliar you know, people. And so how we are going to really you know, uh, go about our work or how we are able to, how we are going to sustain ourselves in this place. So a lot of questions and you don't know what is ahead of you. So for, for many people, even though we know God, it is still a place where we doubt, we fear. There's so much of anxious thoughts running in our mind and we are blurred with our vision. But then I'm here to encourage you, those are custom-made paths for you to understand the sovereign hand of God over your life. So you can't escape. What? Children of God cannot escape these unfamiliar territories, unfamiliar terrain, unfamiliar paths that God so beautifully orchestrates for us to understand hey, that my ways are not, my paths are not, your paths. You expect it to happen in a way, but it doesn't happen that way because I have a very different path. You have certain things in your mind and you feel that that is how it is going to happen, but that is not how it is going to happen. So this morning, it is a, a passage that talks about Paul's voyage to Rome. This is the last leg of his journey. And uh, the Lord promised Paul and uh, he said, Paul, how you stood for me as a witness in Jerusalem, I want you to take heart and I want you to be a witness even in Rome. So Paul knew in his heart that God would take him to. So he was waiting. He was waiting. He was desiring so much. And when you read the book of Romans, you will understand that Paul was longing to reach Rome to proclaim the gospel message. And now uh, because... Uh, of uh, all that happened in Jerusalem, riots and people who were against this gospel message, they wanted to finish off Paul. And now Paul pleads and he says, I want to appeal before Caesar. So take me to Caesar and I want to you know, deal with him, uh, with this case because I've not uh, offended anyone. So I, I, I ask, I request that you take me to Caesar. So now the authorities, they didn't find any fault with uh, Paul. They thought because he requested, let, let us take him to, to Caesar and he will probably hear this case out from this guy. So now he is taken there as a prisoner. I think several months back I spoke about the God of the impossible. That was Acts chapter 27 this morning. It is about Acts chapter 28. Okay. So after the first leg of this voyage, they come to a place called Malta. It is an island. And because of the shipwreck, uh, the, the ship couldn't move any longer, anymore. And uh, prisoners who were sailing in the ship along with the sailors, along with the captain, they kind of, all of them, they sailed. Somehow they reached the shore and they found that this, this island is called Malta. And in this in their itinerary, when they started this journey, they never wanted to come here, okay? They never wanted to take a pit stop. They wanted to really go and make sure that, that Paul was taken to Rome at the earliest. But then even Paul didn't uh, know that uh, there was a plan, there was an interruption that would come his way. And uh, this is a beautiful passage that is very encouraging while we read. So I want you to capture this one thing while Luke is recording this incident in the book of Acts, 
Paul is being taken to Rome by whom? Roman soldiers. But then whose plan was it? Ah, you should, you should capture this idea. It was God's plan. Though it is not the intended way to reach Rome, God had a very different plan, different path, different way to deal with this whole situation. But he ultimately will take Paul to Rome. But now Paul is taken there as a prisoner. Halfway through, there is a shipwreck and all of them, they come to this island called Malta. And I want you to take your Bibles and uh, turn with me to Acts chapter 28. We are going to deal with uh, the first 11 verses, okay? So let's uh, read from now 1 and 2. Once safely on shore, we found out that the island was called Malta. The islanders showed us what kindness? Please underline if you have your Bibles. Okay. What kindness? The times that we are living here on this earth, even to receive kindness, it is a rare commodity. What? With known people, known relatives, known community people, to receive kindness knowing that they are our people, still what? It is hard to find people who show that kind of a kindness, known people. Here, 276 of them, most of them were prisoners. They come to this place not knowing what to expect. And uh, Paul and his uh, you know, few companions along with him who are taken down to Rome, they are also there. And they probably are chained. Imagine this is the situation, okay? Bring this picture to your mind. They are taken there as prisoners and there will be a stamp on those prisoners because prisoners uh, should carry an identity, okay? They were not soldiers, but then they were taken as. So when they reached that show, when they were walking probably a few meters, people in that island, they saw hey, these, they could observe, they could identify, these are prisoners. And knowing that they were prisoners, but then uh, they, they, there was a shipwreck and uh, they are kind of, uh, they, they, they happened to reach this place and they wanted to do something, but then these islanders show unusual what? The first thing in an unfamiliar path, you can always see the hand of God because God will provide what? Unusual kindness. It is not known people, it is not a known place, it is a strange land, place you have never visited before, and those people, and uh, when we go back and read the history of these uh, no, islanders, they were quite uh, no, cruel people. They are very hard-hearted people. They are not tender-hearted. But then what? Hard-hearted people. Just imagine for them to think that, uh, what if these guys will do something, do some harm, while we are thinking of uh, no showing kindness, because these are prisoners, probably they can become a threat to our lives. What if they would have thought in that way? But still they go ahead to show what? Unusual kindness. And the word of God says, they built a fire and welcomed us all because it was raining and cold. It was winter season. Yeah. So they come there without any expectation. I, I feel that uh, probably reading this passage uh, Paul and his companions, and even the others, all that they would have been uh, thinking is, somehow, Lord, have mercy on us, that we will escape from this place. We don't want anything else. Probably that could have been that desire within them. A simple desire. Lord, we have somehow come to this place. Now, Please help us, show us mercy. That's all. We are not expecting anything here great, anything great in this place because we, we want to probably make sure that we move from this place at the earliest. That's all. But these people, what? They built a fire and welcomed us all because it was raining and cold. So they welcomed. They made them comfortable to keep them warm. They what? Uh, they, they built a fire and welcomed. 
and Paul was also there. So I love this word. You know, when I read the you know, passage, this one word just popped up. It is not ordinary kindness. It is what? Unusual kindness. But for you to receive this unusual kindness, we have to travel this unfamiliar Familiar path, you know people, you know the place, and you know these people will do these things. But then, how about an unfamiliar territory where you don't know those people, where you don't know, know the, the place? But then God, no, if you really understand, God can bring those people. God can bring those people from nowhere to help you understand why God has to do this. Because this is a tough journey, right? It was not easy. And they never wanted to have a shipwreck. Um, already they are taken there as prisoners. But then for God to prove that he's interested in this journey and for God to encourage them, he's now providing God's children to understand, hey, I have people even in this island who will take care of you. So we need to take encouragement, Lord. Though we don't understand this path, but then we know while we are expecting certain people to come to take care of us, to comfort us, but then you have so many other people whom we don't even know. So there has been a constant struggle for godly men and women. Lord, I don't have anyone. I don't have anyone. But this morning I want to encourage you. God has so many people for you. <laughs> probably you are expecting someone, you are banking on that one person, but then probably he might not be the person. God has... Those, uh, I should not say strange people, those people are like angels for you. They will come at the, at the time when you least expect them, uh, probably least expected time, they will, they will come as a surprise for you. So wait for God while you are navigating through this unfamiliar path and God will bring about this what? unusual kindness for you to experience him more. Number two, Acts chapter 28, 3 to 6. Now, Paul was also busy you know, gathering a pile of brushwood. The word of God says, Paul gathered a pile of brushwood and as he put it on the fire, a wiper driven out by the heat fastened itself on his hand. When the islanders saw the snake hanging from his hand, they said to each other, this man must be a murderer. For though he escaped from the sea, the goddess justice has allowed him to, not allowed him to. So the moment they saw a snake hanging, swirling around his hand, they concluded chapter close. It is over for Paul. Because every time when such a scenario that they have uh, come across, they knew it is hard for this person to survive. The fate is what? They will die. Because it is a venomous snake, a viper. So the moment they saw, ah, he is a murderer, he is a prisoner. Probably he is one of the most, uh, you no know, uh, uh, wanted criminal. He escaped the sea, but now, God is justice. I don't know which God they believe. Now justice is being given to this man, poor man, poor fellow. Now see what happens. But Paul what? He shook the snake off into the fire, suffered no ill effects. The people expected him to swell up or suddenly fall. So they were keeping a close watch on Paul. Ah, this man is going to drop down dead. He's going to fall down anytime, any moment. But then while they are waiting, nothing is happening. The word of God says, but after waiting a long time and seeing what? They were thinking something usual. What they have seen, what they have experienced all this while. That will happen. But God's hand was upon Paul. Even there was a snake bite, the venomous snake. Nothing is going to. Because who is interested in Paul? Who is interested in this journey? And more than that, for the islanders to listen to Paul, to turn their attention to Paul, God had to do an unusual miracle in this. 
which even Paul didn't know while he uh, landed in this no place, unfamiliar path. But God does what? An unusual miracle that has never happened. So people on this island, they were astonished. How come this man is alive still? Nothing is, the word of God beautifully says, waiting for a long time to see something usual, but then an unusual miracle unfolds. And now, the people who said, this man must have been a murderer, now see their statement. They changed their minds and said, he was? Unusual miracle. In this unfamiliar path, it is, it is such a thrilling experience, no? You imagine uh, a venomous snake swirling around your hand. You are just going about your own work. And people are in awe of you. Because it is not about your might, it is not about your power, but then it is about the power of Christ Jesus. And nothing is going to happen to you, Paul. Because I am about to set an unusual miracle people have never witnessed so that they will put their hope in me. That was a plan of God. So what do we really receive in this unfamiliar path while we navigate through this unfamiliar path? Look out. Look out for God because He is about to do not the usual, but an unusual miracle. Number three. So now this, this word, this uh, word gets uh, uh, spoken across this island. And you see in Acts chapter 28 and 7, there was an estate nearby that belonged to Publius, the chief official of the island, he welcomed us to his, who is writing? Luke. Luke is also in the journey. So he welcomed us to his home and showed us generous hospitality. Hey, what is a big deal? You can probably think in the, someone who is showing, he was a poor, uh, no prisoners, he wanted to show some generosity. What is wrong in that? No, 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 no. Because he heard an unusual miracle happen, he wanted to see who this person so, a man who approaches this island as a prisoner, now he is taken by the chief official as a royal to his. Can you imagine? The starting point of the journey when there was shipwreck and they were only thinking about, Lord, please save our lives. Do you think that Paul would have thought that he would step into the house of the chief official to be treated so well? Three days? Generous hospitality, never. Not even the wildest dreams. But now, seeing that miracle, probably hearing about that miracle, he wanted to see, probably, I want to invite this guy, his companions, I want to host them. Because people are now telling that, probably he's God, he's something, he has some miraculous powers at work. They were not able to identify who that God was, but then they made him as God. Unusual what? Generosity. Because this chief official is supposed to guard that place from such people. Okay? You can't expect the chief official to invite and keep a stranger at home and generously provide. It, it is next to impossible. Probably the islanders, few of them, they can host. But then not the chief official. Because he was inspired by what he heard. He wanted to host because he also believed probably they are special people. Let me see for myself what they are up to. So in an unfamiliar path, you are now what given? Unusual generosity. Rich generosity. By the chief official. In 2012, we were... Uh, about to visit a mission field in the northern part of India. So I, it was like, uh, uh, I think soon after we got married, one year uh, later, Angel was by this time, my wife, she was pregnant uh, for five months and, uh, and we booked the tickets, okay? My, I, I kind of uh, consulted my, one of my cousins who is a doctor and I said, uh, brother, 
no, can we really travel, do this journey? What do you really think? He said, because he's taking us to this field. Uh, so he told, you pray and you, you, I don't have any problem, but then you pray and uh, you, you see what to do about this, but I don't have any problem. I, I don't think so. But then you know that our parents were not really happy. What? It was five months of uh, pregnancy. Why would you take your wife during this time to a mission no field? It is a tough place. So when I prayed, I, I felt convinced I need to do this at all cost because if she delivers a baby, probably for one, one and a half years, we might not be able to visit this place. I, I know it was a tough place, but then I, I told God, Lord, one more time, let me go there. Okay? So we, we booked our tickets. So our journey's itinerary is this. We have to travel from Chennai to Pune by a flight and from Pune to Surat uh, uh, through train. So it is uh, from Pune to uh, Surat is roughly eight and a half hours, nine hours journey. So we booked all the tickets. So everything was taken care of. So now we land in Pune, and from Pune airport, we go to the railway station. Our train was at uh, around 2.30 in the night, uh, early morning. So we went uh, well ahead of time, 12 o'clock. So um, my, my cousin uh, just uh, told me, uh, let us uh, no rest for some time, because the whole day you were working, and uh, there was no rest for you. So rest for a while, and I happened to see that the train is delayed by another uh, no one hour. So I felt probably you know our journey and everything of what we have planned, there could be some delay, okay? So the train was supposed to come at 2.30 uh, in the morning, but then uh, lo and behold, there was a delay, and that was the last status that we saw, and I don't know no Hindi. Mm, I, I, I didn't have the tickets, I didn't have a look at the tickets, so I don't know the train name, train number, nothing. I only was waiting for the instruction from my cousin, okay? So he asked me to sleep, I slept. I made her to sleep in the waiting room. Suddenly, in the middle of the night, he, uh, no, he, he shook me and he said, I think the train has come, let's hurry up. I was like, uh, just uh, no, uh, waking up and I'm saying, what should I really do? By the time I realized I need to wake up Angel, he was not there in the waiting hall. So I shook her up, I said, give me all your bags, we need to hurry up. And I come out of that waiting hall just to see there's no one outside. So I'm just thinking, which one? Probably did he you know, get inside the, the train and uh, probably left us? I don't know. Okay? And there was a call. And he said, please rush platform 7. That's all. To platform 7. So we were rushing. I was literally you know, making her to run. And we come there after a few minutes to platform 7. I spotted my brother. I was a sense of relief. Then I asked him, what happened? Where's the train? Then he told me, I think we missed the train. <laughs> now, for a moment, my faith and all was shaking. Should we continue with this journey or should I return? Because normal time, no, when there was uh, no, uh, no, for me to take this travel, it was okay. But then now with the no angel, carrying for five months, and uh, how will I be able to take her in an unreserved compartment, and that to for nine hours, what will really happen, okay? So while I was contemplating whether should I continue or what, but I was also recollecting, I did pray and ask of the Lord, and he said go, and it was not my mistake, <laughs> okay? And the train came early on that day, on that particular day. The state was showing something else and we missed the train, okay? So whom to blame? I don't know. But, but I was thinking, God, you actually inspired us to do this journey. Now we have come to a place we don't know what else to do. When I asked my brother, he said, let's continue. Uh, but then he said, uh, he also gave us a warning, a caution. Uh, it is going to be a tough journey, okay? So he uh, brought an open ticket. He came and he said, uh, now we need to split the journey. We need to, from Pune, we need to take a train to Mumbai. It is going to arrive in another 20 minutes. So we're waiting. And uh, the train approaches the platform. You know, undeserved compartments, no? Uh, North India, it was packed. Packed with people. There was no space to get in. I was just uh, looking at him. He was looking at me. What should we really get in, he says. How will I get in? What will I do? So then he understood the situation. He said, okay, there's a compartment next, a sleeper compartment. Let's get into that compartment. And fortunately, 
at uh, 2 45 in the morning that door was kept open okay i i feel that god kept that door open for us normally they close the door right nights because some stranger will get into uh, inside the resort compartment they don't want to really uh, know uh, uh, board those strangers so that one uh, particular thing that we went the door was open and we went inside so we were waiting for another two three minutes for the tt to arrive but he didn't so we saw that uh, have you all traveled in train yes so you you know the cabin the, the arrangements okay so in the side upper berth it was empty and in the in the first cabin so in the middle berth towards my right it was empty uh, so my brother spotted out uh, those empty you no know, vacant berths and and immediately he said angel you climb the the upper berth and you and you lie there uh, we will see if someone comes or not so she goes there she lies down two three minutes she slept off okay so while we were having a conversation and uh, what should we really do probably a few more minutes five minutes into this uh, no journey like the train started five minutes and there was an old man who was uh, sleeping on the you know the side lower berth suddenly he woke up he woke up and uh, i don't know what happened to him he was an old guy with the with a beard and all so he took hold of my hand he made me to sit next to him and he pushed me to sleep on that on that seat it was all like uh, no I, i don't know what happened to him suddenly he woke up he took hold of my hand he said sleep so he was uh, he was instructing me to sleep that i was able to because he was also doing some actions sleep sleep don't worry i i'm here sleep and you know sometimes uh, rich generosity uh, i what can i say this old man now takes both you no know, my my legs and puts it on his lap and he massages sleep 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 i was like lord probably even in the third ac compartment i'll not have this kind of massaging facility now you are adding something beautiful no though this is so unfamiliar something that i was really fearful to take and because i was also tired and it was so soothing for my legs i also slept off i am not giving you a story it is a real time incident okay so i also what slept off and uh, next after four hours my i only hear my uh, cousin you no know, waking me up that morning i think probably around 7:38 he said hey we have reached mumbai get up wake up angel so we thank the lord lord four hours your goodness we slept so peacefully with all the extra facility okay praise be to god sometimes unfamiliar path that when we need to travel and we know that god is interested in the travel do not for one moment doubt god because that that experience will really give you that kind of a faith you will never forget because for un, in the usual you no know, place when god does something you don't even sometimes uh, you take it for granted ah i know we have done all the hard work. but then an unfamiliar pathway when you don't know what else to do what how we are going to you no know, see through this journey when we have all those doubts and god brings his people god helps you to understand hey i am still there in this journey and makes it so comfortable for you to realize god is in this journey okay the second part of the story i am not going to share it right now okay otherwise it will be too much of a story this morning so i all that i am saying is what god is interested to give you some unexpected moments while we travel the unfamiliar path which god is interested so you see the same thing happening here with paul and his companions they never thought they will come to this chief official's house richly blessed nice food nice play nice day praise be to god are you ready to walk this unfamiliar path with god yes or no now it is getting interesting still people are pastor no pastor still we doubt Huh? you need to be excited to walk those unfamiliar paths because god is with you and he will do something unusual unexpected for you to know that he is god he is interested in your life 
Number four, and now when they reach this island, reach this island, all the supplies they carried from home, from, no, from the place they started, everything was gone because they had to lighten the load of the ship. They, they threw everything you know, into the sea to lighten the load of the ship so that it will not, not sink in. And now they are left, when they, when they approach this island, they literally didn't have anything. After staying, the word of God says, they stayed there for three months. They wintered there for three months. Now, God gives unusual, shows what? Unusual kindness through these people. And he does an unusual miracle for the islanders to see that these are special people, my people. And then he gives what? An unusual, unexpected way of showing generosity from the top man of this island. And now they don't stop there. Let's read from Acts chapter 28 and 10. The word of God says, They honored us in many ways. And when we were ready to sell, they furnished us with the supplies. So that was a pit stop they never imagined. They felt it was an interruption. Paul would have been praying, What? Lord, why would this pit stop at this point in time? Why do you bring this interruption all of a sudden? Huh? I am eager to reach Rome, God. I am desperate to reach Rome, to share the gospel, to make disciples out there, to form churches, to establish churches. And while I am praying about that, why would you put here in this island called Malta, God? And uh, God knows that the supplies are all gone. They have to be refurbished, right? Ah, restored back. And now... All of the islanders know knowing these are special people, God's people, probably by this time they identified three months of time and now they are giving supplies for the rest of the journey. They honored them, the word of God says, in many ways, unexpected ways, where these people were taken as prisoners, now they are treated as royals because they were willing to walk this unfamiliar. Hey, this is just not uh, an incident that we uh, keep listening to. We need to what? Experience. Experience. Last month, last month, July 19th, all of a sudden, my father had a brain hemorrhage. He was so active all uh, this while, 73 years, a man who was very hardworking. I've never seen him taking off. From the time that um, I know him to be my father, I always, I've always got inspired by the way he goes about his work. Very meticulous. He was working for a company, but then... Uh, as a mechanical engineer, not even once did he say, I'm not feeling well, I'm not keeping well, let me take a break. No, he was running, he was running. So I, I saw him very active. So we couldn't really now uh, come to terms, hey, this is a kind of an interruption in between. Now what do, what do we do? Uh, how we are going to sail through this uh, phase? A lot of questions, a lot of doubts. So we uh, get him admitted in uh, Ramachandra Hospital in Porur. So he's taken to the M uh, ICU ward. He was kept there for eight days, okay? But then when we entered that hospital, I was just thinking, who will come to help us? Who will probably come to give us assistance and support? We don't know anyone here. Who will help us with... So from the emergency ward, they found out through a CT scan that he had a hemorrhage, and uh, they wanted to take him to the ICU. So I just thought for a moment, God, after he's taken to the ICU, probably I might not be able to see him, probably in one day, half an hour. And, uh, and what if, if he needs something, I'll not be able to see my dad. I was just thinking, I was just thinking. There was a hand that was placed on my shoulders. 
I was a doctor in Ramachandra. Richard, what are you doing here? I was surprised. How come you are here? I'm working here. Don't worry. I'll take care of your dad. So anytime, any, anytime you want to get into, inside the ICU, I'll help you. No problem. I thank the Lord. The next day morning, I was sitting waiting in the attendance you know, hall. I wanted to see the reports of the CT scan. <laughs> but then they keep it so confidential. Till they are in the ICU, they don't release those reports. For some good reasons. So I was just thinking, there comes a youngster and he says, Anna, why are you sitting here? What has happened to you? I told him the scenario. Forget it. Both of my sisters are in this ICU only. We will get all the reports you want. Anytime, don't worry. So, while I was thinking, God, you have people all around. Next day morning, we forgot the tag. Without the tag, they will not allow us inside. Morning, 5 o'clock. Uh, we had one tag and for my wife, my brother took that tag, the other tag. So we wanted to see our dad. No, again, there was one more round of CT scan. We wanted to get inside. So she told, no, no, you get inside. It's already late. And I saw like uh, in a minute's time, she followed me. And I asked, how do they allow you? She told, there was one more doctor. It seems that she knows you. She said, I am the doctor here. Please allow her. Everywhere, when I go to the pharmacy, Pastor, how are you? And I go to the canteen. Pastor, how are you? I saw everywhere what? People are wishing. I never felt I was isolated in that place. All the time with people sharing about the goodness of God. About the stories of encouraging people. Whether it is in the ICU room, whether it is in the emergency, whether it is the normal ward, whether it is the pharmaceutical you know, place. Everywhere God has His people. And then, you know, the one who was treating my father, fourth day he called me inside and he said, who are you? Then I told now, I am serving in the church. Why there is so much of pressure to give updates about your father? I don't know. I didn't say to anyone. Across the city from many hospitals, they are coming, calling. What happened to this person? So I thought, oh, he felt I was a great guy. <laughs> Actually, yes. No, because we serve a great God. I don't have an influence to call a doctor from the other hospital. But then people across the city calling this person's father. We want to know what procedure you are doing. This person's father. So he said, people from that hospital, this hospital, from that hospital, upper constantly they are calling. He said, I will take care of your father, pa. Don't worry. God honors those who honor him. Not even once, no, the moment when I went, I sat, I was writing down, and that person said, hey, this is the amount that, uh, that, will, that you need to pay every day for ICU. For a moment, I thought, Lord, how is it even possible? The moment I thought, I said, no, 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 no. That is not in my control, but you will provide God. You know what? <laughs> not even one day I lacked. Some people, they come, they pay their amount and they go. I don't even know about those people. And I felt honored because even I was working in the corporate, I wouldn't have known so many doctors. I wouldn't have had this kind of an honor from people. Okay? That is our God. Amen? In the unfamiliar path, while you are traveling through the difficult moments in your life, God gives, God honors, God supplies. So don't for a moment doubt God because he has everything in his control. Amen. The last one is this. It is an unexpected opportunity. So Paul never probably thought about this islanders when he started this journey. God had a plan for all the prisoners who were sailing along with him in the ship. And now God has a plan for all of these islanders. You see how it happens. It is so beautiful. It is so marvelous. Acts chapter 28, 8 and 9. The chief official's father, Publius, was sick in bed, suffering from fever and dysentery. Paul went in to see him and after prayer placed in hands on him and healed him. 
when this happened, the rest of the sick on the island came and where? Now they understood seriously they are up to something. When you know, the, the chief official invited him, hosted him, showed rich generosity to Paul and his companions, and then when he knew that his father was sick, he went, placed his hands, cured him of his sickness. And the islanders saw, wow, this is good. Come, let's also go and pray. You know what? The historians record, the traditions record because of this chief official who got converted later, the whole island got converted. That is the power of God. God is just not uh, no, giving you some unrecognized benefits for you to enjoy and feel satisfied about. That is, that is part of his plan, that's all. To prove that he is interested in you, he is interested in the journey, and he is along with you in this unfamiliar path that he is navigating you through. But then more than that, he has kept you for a reason, for his plans, for his purposes. And the tradition say, though I don't know, but then it is an article which says, Publius was the first bishop of Malta. He was the first bishop of the city of Athens. And later he died as a martyr. So when they landed in this unfamiliar terrain, imagine nothing would have been there in their mind. All that they would have been thinking is what? Lord, save us. But God said, it is just not about saving your life, Paul. It is so easy for me. But then I am concerned about this island. I am concerned about this chief official. I am concerned about every people, every person in this island. I'm concerned about them. Paul, I want you to make sure that you fulfill while you are journeying to Rome. I'm taking you. But then there is a pit stop in the interruptions of life. There is always godly intervention. What? In the interruptions of life, look out. You can find godly interventions. And uh, today we, when we think about you know, the the Maltese tradition, they are one of the Christian you know, nation in the West. Praise be to God. It all happened because of this unfamiliar path that Paul and his companions had to take. And uh, don't limit these unrecognized benefits, unusual, unexpected, and feel happy about yourself because God has a greater plan, bigger plan. When you landed in that unfamiliar path, all that you are thinking, Lord, how I will survive. But God says, it is not about your survival because I have put you here so that many will what? Survive because of me. A place of ruin suddenly seems to be a place of refuge. A place of insecurity suddenly seems to be a place of super security. Because they, it is not about the people of the island. It is about God's providence in this unfamiliar place. It is about how God builds this whole thing because he was interested in the people of this island. Are you scared about walking this unfamiliar path with God? I pray in the name of Jesus that God will open up your eyes to see that that will be unusual kindness that you will receive even as you hold on to God, even as you have faith, having assurance in God. The world talks when you go through changes in life, unfamiliar path, become flexible. You do it by yourself. But God says, I've given you faith. Faith is all about having confidence in things that we hope for and assurance of things that we do not see. We have faith in God. We have faith in God. He will certainly do great and mighty things. And God is about to do unusual miracles. Do you believe that with all of your heart this morning? Not the usual miracles. Not the usual ones. Not the ordinary ones. Because we serve an extraordinary God. And He is God of the impossible. He is God of miracles. And He will do an unusual miracle.
a rich generosity you are thinking probably you are seated here thinking lord i need this much who will supply what do you think about our god who will come for my sake god and you are thinking about all those people and you have come to an end the list is over there's no one else hey the earth belongs to the lord he holds everyone under his control he can bring the chief of this land for you that is god to show rich generosity the ceo of the company for you the manager the boss for you not that they are great but our god is great to honor you because he wants to honor his children the lord said test and see test and see he's not a debtor to any person he's not a debtor to his children when you honor him he will honor you back double fold and there are unexpected opportunities waiting for you it is just not about you about your family it is not about just about your children but it is about nations that needs to know god and god is raising up disciples families for this great work that he has called us to do are you ready to walk this unfamiliar path can we all raise up to our feet thank you jesus thank you jesus hallelujah can we say god do this unusual thing in my life god i don't want the ordinary lord i don't want the ordinary but then something extraordinary oh god something that i've never witnessed in my life unusual things unexpected things to know that you are god to know that you are god